from America's Got Talent and DHPL. Here we go. I, um, 
My mom made me do band. <laughs> yes, and I you know, did percussion. I think I wanted to, I wanted to play the saxophone. Um, that was my first choice, was the saxophone. And then I didn't get it, and I got percussion. Uh, but I mean, could you imagine playing saxophone? Uh, maybe someday. Uh, but um, yeah, <laughs> band was just a class. You know, it felt like school. And like I said, school didn't, you know, I didn't like it that much. Um, but freshman year, band class. Mr. O'Shea, are you here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, Mr. O'Shea. Um, so, freshman year, I remember I was talking in the back of the classroom, and he yelled at me. Um, and I was like, so upset about it, because you know, I didn't like get in trouble, and, I don't know, it was just, it was the worst. I didn't like being in that class anyway, but no offense. It's, you know, um, the first, let, let me get that. Uh, um, but, you know, I didn't like being in band. You know, it just wasn't my thing, right? I didn't think that that was my thing at all at that time. And I remember going home and telling my mom, hey mom, I want to quit band. And she was like, you can't quit band. And I was like, go quit band. Uh, and she was like, you can't, like, why do you want to go to band? I was like, I don't know, I'm not going to do this. You know, I'm not a musician, I'm an athlete, I'm going to go to college for baseball, you know, like, this just isn't worth my time at all. Um, obviously the world had a different plan for me. Um, but she reached out to Mr. O'Shea after I had that conversation with her. And she was like, Ben, I need you to keep here in Ben. He just told me that he's going to quit. And I need you to keep him in band. And Mr. O'Shea was like, I'll do what I can. And after that conversation, Mr. O'Shea started surrounding me with um, difficult musical situations. He started putting me in to professional places. You know, he put, he gave me harder music. He, you know, put the harder things towards me. He, he made me section leader, which I don't think I deserved. Um, you know, he just put me in these situations that I you know, didn't know that I wanted to be in at that time. Um, but he kind of pushed this music world out to me because he, he saw something in me, and I did not. I had no idea. Um, but, you know, he, he put me in all of these, these situations. And he lit that musical spark. Um, you know, I started picking up the piano around that time. Um, I remember just sitting down one day and trying to learn things, and I would just watch YouTube videos and, you know, trying to figure out, like, how to play and how to, how to work my way around this thing. You know, I didn't really know how it works, and um, I fell in love with Billy Joel, I fell in love with, you know, all of these, these, these greats, and uh, something that I uh, am very fortunate that I was able to experience was, although I was self-taught, you know, I didn't have somebody sitting next to me giving me notes and scales to play. I never had that. You know, what I had was feeling. And I had this, uh, this great sense of feeling and being able to understand how things made me feel. So during that time when I was teaching myself how to play, um, I relied on, you know, my senses. You know, I would, I would hear a song and I would analyze like, hey, why did that, why did that make me feel that way? Like, what was that? Like, what was that thing? Like, it just made my like, heart drop. Like, what was that moment? And I'd go to that moment, and then I'd figure it out, and I'd try and replicate that. Uh, like, um, let me give you an example. Um, like, I was listening to a lot of, like, uh, film scores during that time, because I loved movies, and I loved uh, John Williams. And, you know, he does, like, Princess Leia's theme, right from Star Wars. I would hear that, and I was like, there's something about that movie. 
But he, he brought me in the jazz band, and like I said, I wasn't, I didn't read music. And a lot of jazz is, is reading music, you know, so he put these charts in front of me, and I'd just like go, I'd be like, oh my god, like how am I even supposed to do this? And I mean, he, he knew that I was, um, I didn't know how to do that, you know, he knew that, but you know, we worked our way through it. I, I could read chords all right, so I pretty much just like BS my way through the whole thing. I just would just like comp the chords and like, he, he totally knew that I was BSing, but he did a good job of like, you know, supporting me, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I, I learned so much from being in that band. You know, and I'm not a big jazz guy either. But you know, I learned so much about being a professional musician in that band. He he asked me to improvise one time, and as you know, jazz is all about you know improv and it's taking solos. And he t he asked me to take a solo, and I was like, I have no idea what that is. And he was like, All right, so the song's like in the key of C ish. And you know, you know the major scale, right? And I was like, nope. <laughs> and he was like, well, it goes like this. And he's like, if you change a few notes, you get your blues scale. And he was like, well, you should take this home and you should play around with it and kind of see what you can do with it. And I, I remember going home and it was just like, this whole world of music just like exploded. I was just, Playing around with it. You know, and I, I just like, wow, I can do that? Like, there's so much more to music. You know, there's, there's so much more that I can do. And, you know, just from learning that one scale, and I didn't like scale, but no scales were. I just, I knew what it looked like. Um, but just learning that just expanded my whole world of music, and I realized that there was just so much more out there. And, you know, I, I want to take this time to thank Mr. O'Shea for, you know, lighting that spark in me and for seeing something in me that I didn't see. Um, you know, you have, you know, changed my life, I, I believe, um, and I want to thank you very, very much, Mr. Rochelle. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love you, man. Um, and, you know, if any of you haven't gone down to the band room, like, if you're not doing anything, this year, and you're just like sitting there, <laughs> creep down here and just listen to some of the stuff that's going on here because it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, so, here I am now. Um, a lot has happened, um, and I'm, I'm going to play you a song. And this song. I wrote in the fall. The last, let's say, we're actually getting to the one year of the time that I wrote this song. But when I wrote this song, I didn't really know what was going on in my life. I think I was, I was struggling a lot with, with everything. I think waking up every day was hard. You know, I didn't know what tomorrow was going to look like. I was just in this huge, huge rut. You know, I remember like clinging to my phone every day away at college, like talking to my mom, talking to this therapist, like, hey, like what like, what's wrong with me? Like why is like nothing is right? Like what is this? Like why can't I shake it? I always shake things, but this is just I can't. And I was just trying to figure it out. And it's, it's kind of who I am as a writer and as an artist, you know, I, I I analyze and I think about things more than the average person. I dwell on things more than the average person. I try and understand things like times a thousand. And you know, during this situation that I was in, I was 
I was able to step out of myself and say, okay, you're really messed up right now. What's going on? Like, is it this? How do we fix it? What can we do? Da, 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 da. And I, you know, I was just trying to figure it out because it's what I do, I just try and figure it out. And I sat down at the piano one day and I just started pulling, pulling things out. I was like analyzing, I was like, all right, this is why I feel this way. This is why I feel this way. And, you know, it's gotta get better at the end because it usually gets better at the end. You know, just like organizing things. And that's what this song was, was, was organizing. Um, and rationalizing my situation, and it's the only way that I knew how to do it. Um, and this song came to me, and this song, it's, it's very weird to say, but this song has definitely changed my life um, for the better. Um, but what, what were the two, you know, darkest months of my whole life turned into the two most important and, you know, most the crucial months of my life, because if I didn't go through that, you know, that change, that whatever that was, you know, I, I wouldn't have gotten this song. And if I didn't get this song, I wouldn't be here in front of you today. Um, it's funny to say that, but it's true. Um, so before I play this, I want to say thank you to all of you who work in the school district. Um, you have the best jobs in the world and the most important jobs in the world. Uh, you have the ability to to change change lives. You know these these kids are vulnerable. They're um, looking for change. They're looking to grow up. They're looking to figure out who they are. And you know you have this power to help them. You know be who they are. Um, so I, I hope you remember that. And I hope you know that. Um, thank you all so much for for listening to me speak. Um, this song is called Disengage. Thank you.
And the worst part is your mind keeps moving. But this life is a lesson. And we're just improving. Someone's gotta have me. Someone's gotta have me.